Sawyer kills Sawyer, Locke gets help subverting Ben's command, and Carlton reveals when Lost will be on next season. We'll have insight on all that and more in today's official Lost podcast hosted by ABC.com. Welcome back to the podcast. This week, we're again joined by executive producers Damon Lindelof and Carlton Cuse to discuss last week's murderous romp, The Brig, in which we finally learned about one of the biggest crosses in lost history. We'll have insight on all that as well as some deftly dropped hints about this coming week's episode, The Man Behind the Curtain, which airs Wednesday, May 9th from 10 to 11 p.m. on ABC. Well, good morning, Damon. Good morning, Carlton. And welcome to another official Lost podcast, sanctioned and authorized. I'm Carlton Cuse, and sitting to my left is Damon Lindelof with no pants. And we're here to talk about the episode The Brig and talk about next week's episode, which is called... The Man Behind the Curtain. Carlton, I have to point out that you are being very professional this morning. It might have something to do with it. We're in the ABC radio room as we record this podcast. We've actually been on sort of a roving podcast quest uh, the last few weeks. Uh, We just finished doing a morning radio tour. We were talking to morning drive people in what like 19 different cities around the we country we went we went coast to coast you know they make us wake up at 4:30 in the morning and drive over to ABC and we start with Atlanta and basically everybody asks us much less interesting questions than you guys do um, right. usually sort of starting with why don't you give us any answers and you finishing know. with why don't you give us any answers and then and and then finally why don't you give us any answers right exactly and they don't know that where we give the real answers is right here on the on, on, the, the, a, podcast. on the official podcast there's no jumping around no no denying the answers here so speaking of answers carlton let's talk about the brig which you and i wrote and uh and 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 i think we gave a big answer last week let's talk about that um anthony cooper is in fact the original sawyer and uh i'm curious as to how long we knew that that was the case that that's a question that i think probably people are asking out there well we actually knew for a really long time that those two guys uh that that was sort of one of the most seminal crosses in the entire series that Locke's father was in fact the same con man who was responsible for the death of Sawyer's parents and we just kept you know that was something which we have kind of been percolating over for several seasons. I mean, and we really, felt it was fairly obvious. I mean, that, yeah. that's one of the things that we were sort of surprised by, how, how, how many people didn't kind of key into it. I'll, we've gotten the question, and we haven't really read it um, on, on several of our podcasts because we didn't want to give it away. But, you know, the fact that Anthony Cooper was, was using the word con, you know, way back in the beginning of season two, and, you know, there's, a, there's an episode, uh, I think it was 13 of season two, where Locke and Sawyer are trekking out, and, you know, it's the one where Friendly basically warns them off, and, and Locke asks Sawyer why he chose the name Sawyer, and there are all sorts of things that we did to sort of set up the reveal, but, uh, you know, kind of, there it is. And sometimes, you know, I think we had, there were some other points at which we thought about telling the story and revealing the cross, but sometimes, you know, in, like in other things in life, it's uh, it's better to wait. And I think by waiting, we actually got much more value out of this cross, and it really came at a really kind of good time in this season, and it, and it really is going to propel a lot of uh, the narrative for the remainder of the season. I mean, you know, now... Um, Locke has basically been able to accomplish the mission that Ben gave him, which is don't come back without your dead father's body on your back. And at the end of the episode, we saw Locke walking wow, off Locke, with that body. Locke really takes things literally, doesn't he? He really does. Yeah. It's exactly. like when I say, I mean, like, you wouldn't want to say, hey, like, you know, go break a leg. You yeah, know, he would probably, you know, he, uh, he might go do that. I guess if, if the others tell him that, that he's special, he'll do, he'll do pretty much anything, which is, you know, that's another interesting scene sort of that, we're, that, that bears a little bit more conversation. This guy, Richard Alpert, who we've we've seen in the outside world. He's the one who goes off and sort of recruits Juliet, and he's sort of always hanging around in the shadows there. He kind of it's it looks like he's subverting Ben a little bit. He kind of he takes Locke in a pensive moment and sits down next to him and basically says, "You're special, John." And Ben wanted to embarrass you, and he actually gives him the file. He he shows him here's how you can kill your father without having to you know do it yourself. Uh, what do you think that's all about? I think the others must have an incredibly massive um, network of private investigators in the <laughs> real world who have basically come up with all this information. That's interesting. 
Um, or but, just Mikhail. <clears throat> obviously, uh, Alpert is kind of an Iago-esque character in that he seems to be manipulating or trying to manipulate the power structure of the others. Would that be fair? Either that or he actually believes that uh, – that, um, that John Locke is uh, is is an important sort of character in terms of the the mystical aspects. Of, it's it's almost like he says we've been waiting th- we've been waiting for you, John. You know you're special. The idea that you were healed so instantly on an island that we know has healing properties. But you know Locke was basically paralyzed in one second, and then uh, the instant that he made contact with the island, he was suddenly kind of walking around. So. Um, that that might uh, it activate some of the others and make them kind of give them pause as to what this guy's role might be. But to but to quickly uh, to switch into pre-hashing mode, I think we're going to see Alpert again next week. Is that true? And in, in 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 the man behind the curtain, it is. And I think that's a very good segue, Damon, because <laughs> uh, those uh, it might be that Locke walks in with his uh, dad's body on his back and says, "Okay, now tell me the answers." And who, and who does he say that to? Uh, ben. So, is it, it could it could it be intuited that next week we might be learning more about Ben? Finally, thank God. Can I ask you another question? Yes, you may. Is Ben the man behind the curtain? Ben is the man behind the curtain. Maybe. Is there a man or behind the curtain? Maybe there's somebody else who's. That's not really an answer. I'm kind of dodging. What does that even mean, the man behind the curtain? Well, it's kind of a reference to the Wizard of Oz, where you basically had this sort of ferocious and majestical, you know. Wizard of Oz, and then there was, in fact, this very small man behind the curtain. And he said, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Right. So. And so, you know, I think we have to see. There's, I think it's sort of uh, it's alluding to a question of who, in fact, is not the leader of the others, who's in charge of the others, who's, and how powerful are they really? Are we going to be learning more about this, this Jacob character that everybody's been alluding to? My God, I hope so. Just, I hope so. Seriously. I mean, seriously. we're coming down to the end now, and uh, if we don't... If we don't hear more about Jacob or understand where he sort of fits into what the are you structure, do? I'm going to stop watching is what I'm going to do, Carlton. <laughs> I'm going to stop watching your show, and I'm going to start watching just the Food Network. Uh, okay. Because at least I know a meal will be prepared by episode's <laughs> end, and I'll know how that meal was made, and I'll know how I can make it myself. <laughs> well, you'll have some questions about it. <laughs> Speaking of questions. Oh, let's get to our questions. Let's get to viewer questions. Um, most importantly, we're very happy that we have Chris back. He was uh, off at uh, Disney World on a um, five-day party cruise uh, last week, um, <laughs> and uh, but now he's back with us. Isn't that a fair assessment, Chris? Uh, y- yes, and I'm still sunburned. Oh, good. Okay. If that if if that's a sunburn, I don't want to <laughs> see you when you're pale. I have to wear sunglasses right now. Very shiny young man. All right. Well, are you you. You seem like you're kind of fired up on the question front. You want to start over there? I want to kick it off. Kick Uh, it off, baby. This question is posted by Banjo Enthusiast. uh, (laughs) 15 posts in the last 90 days. It's a nice saying number. Hi, amigos. Could you guys confirm if Tom was quoting Alvar Hanso in the episode The Hunting Party, which is back in season two, when he said, you know, sometimes somebody a whole lot smarter than anybody here once said, since the dawn of our species, man's been blessed with curiosity. If so, does that mean the others do have a connection with the Hanso Foundation? Love Lost, and I'm looking forward to the debut of the show, Don't Make Me Play This Banjo, and the secret ABC project starring Damon called Don't Make Me Wear My Pants. (laughs) Well, those are still both in development. However, they are fast-tracked. Don't expect to see them announced next week at ABC's Upfronts, but um, they are are progressing nicely through the development (laughs) mill. Um, Yes, in fact, that was very similar to... um, what Oliver Hanzo said and was quoted on his um, website was that and, where it was? Yeah. Well, I think it was quoted on that web this website. And for some reason, if I if Carlton, you were to actually read this quote aloud, it might actually ring ring some bells for other members yes. of the audience. From the I see what where is it? From the dawn of time, since the dawn of our species, man has been blessed with curiosity. Where have I heard that before? Hmm. Where have I heard that exact me. voice before? Since the dawn of time, man has been blessed with curiosity. <laughs> Call one eight. Yeah. 888, dial Hanzo, whatever that was. Are there going to be any fake Hanzo commercials this year? There will not be any fake Hanzo Lord, commercials I hope this not. year. All right. Well, However, that, we, you may hear my voice. That's sort of conclusively. Of yeah, there might be some voice cameos voice, in yeah, the voice finale cameos. this year. It's pretty exciting. I know. You, you might even hear Damon's voice somewhere Keep in the finale. Keep your ears peeled for that, for that's the melodic, our... harmonious tones of me. And me in the finale. <laughs> <laughs> now you're doing it. I am. Okay, All right. Would you like to ask a question I, in that voice or any other? I'm going to ask. A vo- I'm going to ask you a question in this voice. 
why so down on this week's podcast? <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's the perfect coffee. question to ask in that voice. By Temporal 173, 114 posts in 90 days. Well, me, right me, on the edge. Let me just ask you, it's, is it t- Temporal 173? Yes. So it's possible then that their time travel is involved in that posting. So maybe they're not posting every day. They've gone back in time and <coughs> done more posts than expected. So they, it's possible that they're not entirely insane. Exactly. Hey, DNC, I was wondering why you were both so down, or should I say what up with the gloom at the beginning and end of the podcast broadcast on the 30th of April? I sincerely hope it wasn't some personal bad news anyway and that it was story related. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. If so, does this relate to the high percentage of people being killed off in season four? I guess it's goodbyes due to events in the season three finales. We will all soon find out. You guys have always kept me gripped, and I suppose it is the only show where the actor would benefit from being killed off, as they don't have to worry about being typecast. Anyway, I hope the cloud has passed. Keep kicking butt, Temporal 173. Well, Temporal 173, you know, we acknowledge, even when we finish that podcast, sometimes we look at each other and we high-five, I put my pants back on, Carlton plays a song just for me, and we realize that we knocked it out of the park. But other times, like the April 30th podcast, I think we uh, we acknowledge that there's this thing that, that we experience actually as writers that I think the audience experiences after the finale, which is a little bit of postpartum depression, this idea that, wow, we've actually finished. Um, and, and with that comes sort of an inherent um, depression or a downer. And then it's quickly replaced by what you're probably hearing now and enthusiasm in our voices is we actually begin to see the finale and post the finale and start talking about season four with the writers. So um, we're again excited, but we apologize for any depression. And we assure you that it was it was purely personal and had nothing to do with all of the people we are killing this year <laughs> and next year. That actually kind of uh, that makes, us. Us, uh, makes us happy. Carlton, I've got a very okay. easy question for you. Fantastic. This is by Cento57, 138 posts in the, in the last 90 days. Rock on, dude. Dear Damon and Carlton, I was just thinking that this island lacks monkeys. One <laughs> would think that a tropical island would have lots of monkeys. Where are the monkeys? Oh, my God. You are so prescient. <laughs> um, well, there is this, uh, there's a certain monkey we like to refer to as Jupe. Yes. A who, very important monkey. Who was um, a part of the uh, research that was being conducted by the Hanzo Foundation. Will Jupe be making any appearances we, on the show? We sincerely hope that Jupe will show up. Jupe is like 150 years old, and Jupe could tell us a lot. Well, I think we've actually referred to Jupe on the podcast before. How, and how, old is, how old is Jupe? He's old. He's pretty old, yeah. I mean, by now, he's got to be real old. But I, I think that... You know, Jupe has always been sort of our our backdoor cancellation episode, which is you know, which is if the show were ever to be canceled, we would just cut to him and he would turn around. You'd see a le- sort of a leather chair with its back to you behind a desk with all these books stacked in a, and and then the chair would turn around and we would reveal Jupe smoking a pipe and he'd go, "Ha ha! I suppose you're wondering who I am. My name is Jupe." And then he would proceed to explain all the mysteries of the island. This is Eddie Kitsis's idea. And that's um, yeah, that's pretty much pretty much the last episode of the show you'll right. ever see. Because at that point, it's like, why bother? At that point, we're pretty much running from the building. But Jupe was the name of the monkey on Myster- and Jules, Jules Verne's Mysterious Island. And um, we know. would like to have monkeys. Um, I, we we just haven't gotten around to doing any monkey stories yet. There's yeah, a lot of monkey business though. Yeah, one <laughs> that that that. All right, Damon. <laughs> Here's a question for Damon Carlton and Chris. Oh! Chris, getting some air time. Oh. Getting some air time. I've got a Chris question coming up, too. By so. Valentin. <laughs> you know, apparently Chris is superseding us. Pretty soon it'll just be Chris's podcast. I'm Chris, not a, Chris, ask Chris I'm why. I'm not entirely Who sure cares? that Chris is not the one submitting these questions. But <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Pretty soon we'll just be producing this podcast. I right? want this question, Carlton. Okay, first, Damon. Will Lost run January through May next year? Also, has any network picked up Carnivore yet? Uh, no, Carnivore is, is still like like the uh, like Don't Make Me Play This Banjo in active development. We have the theme song, we've got the idea, and it's one of those things that started as a joke, but I think would make an awesome TV show. And uh, yes, it is our hope, and I think that ABC actually is in agreement with us on this, that the show will actually run much the way that it did in its second pod this year. So basically, we would forego the, um, the episodes that ran in you know, October to November and just pick it up in the spring and run straight through with no reruns. Cool. 
Next, Carlton, do you guys plan on doing podcasts during the hiatus? I hope so, because there is something I look forward to on a weekly basis, and it would be nice to have something Lost-related while it's not airing. Well, thank you. Um, yes, yeah. I would like to do Do you even need anybody else here? You I don't, know? really? Yeah. I'm just going to go to the restroom <laughs> take, while, you, take while you ask yourself questions. Um, I would like to do a podcast with myself uh, next uh, during the hiatus, Isn't actually. Isn't that a sin if you're a Catholic? <laughs> I, I, I think it is. <laughs> Well, I guess it depends on... Thou shalt not podcast thyself? No, it would be fun to actually check in and do a podcast. We actually take a vacation from the end of... The the finale goes on on May 23rd, and we're sort of gone for the next month. That's when we take our vacation, recharge our batteries, and... And try to um, you know get a little downtime, but maybe uh, over the summer, and certainly since there's going to be a long time before the show comes back, um, Chris, we'd we'd have to find out whether the powers of be would let us do that. Well, we'll definitely be down at Comic Con this year, so make sure uh, keep an eye out for us, and we'll be uh, bringing that panel as a podcast for you guys later. Ooh, in that sounds exciting. Wow, that's very exciting. And since you're already basically monopolizing this entire podcast, Chris, the third part of this question is, and finally, Chris. Oh yeah, Chris. Great. Let's Chris, see what Chris has to you say. You enjoy your job, and what is it like watching these two record without pants and strumming on banjos all the time? Well, I'm still holding Damon's pants, but uh, other than that, it's great. And by holding my pants, he means that they're folded neatly in his lap. I don't want you to get, think anything perverted. They will be starched before the end of the podcast. Thank you very much. And that's this, the one thing I ask of you. And this question was from Bo Valentine Wisneski. Wis Wisneski. Um, P.S. Is Ben's. Is Ben Locke's foster brother? Just kidding. So that was just a rhetorical question, or I think someone was trying answer? to make me laugh. The answer. Oh, right. That's what. <laughs> that's what. That's what started the entire maddening. Tirade. And you totally like you know didn't edit out all my crazy laughter. Everybody thinks I'm insane now. Thank you. I think everyone knows you're insane now, Carlton. Yeah. This question's by Leroy Lebowski, two posts in the na- last 90 days. Dear creators, when Lost is canceled, will ABC <laughs> give you guys enough notice to end the show properly, or will we all be left hanging, as was the case in shows like Carnival? P.S. Love the show. Keep up the good work. <laughs> I love the sort of the pessimism and the optimism <laughs> presented by Leroy. Um, no, I think there's not a lot of chance that the show will just end sort of mid-stride like uh, Carnival. It is our hope that Lost will, in fact, not be canceled, that it will actually end. And, you know, we've mentioned this before, and we are, you know, still in discussions with ABC and hope to arrive, uh, get to a place pretty soon where we can actually announce the end date of Lost and be able to tell you exactly how much more Lost there is. And that's something which is really important for us. And, you know, it's important both creatively because it allows us to then really plan out the remaining episodes and know exactly how many more episodes we have to tell our remaining mythology and it's also important. We want the show to end while it's still relevant. I mean, and Lost is is not a franchise show like a Grey's Anatomy or something which can kind of go on and on and on, and you can always rejuvenate it with new doctors, and there's always another medical case that's going to walk into that hospital. This is a story with a beginning, a middle, and an end, and we want to basically be able to tell the audience when the end is. That was a very concise and well-thought-out answer, Carlton. Thank you. There's a certain formality sitting in this radio room that uh, is different than having a DAT recorder on a cardboard box in your office. <laughs> I miss the cardboard box. I, I could bring the cardboard box in if it would make you all feel. I home. do. I feel. Uh, I feel lonely without the cardboard box. Does the Hurley bird catch the worm? Hey, DNC. <laughs> I was just wondering if the bird which calls out Hurley's name was actually Smokey. Why a bird? The lack of wildlife stops Smokey from using a bird. The, the lack of wildlife stops Smokey from using a bird. Looks at the point of reference. So this must. Have come from Do you want a minute, Carlton? I have no idea no, what the hell it is no. you're saying. Obviously, this sentence came from uh, the subconscious of the writer here. Who is the writer? <laughs> Temporal 173. How many posts in the last 90 days? 114. <laughs> I think I read his other question. That was, you know. Which question did he ask first? So my real question is, where in Hurley's past did we see the bird? Is it part of something we haven't yet shown in flashbacks? And how does it relate to Hurley? Well... We, we, the, the Hurley bird is still a very mysterious figure on the island. We don't know if it's in fact saying his name or, or uh, if, it's, if, it's, if it's traditional. Hurley call is actually just, just one of those things that, that sounds like something that it's not. Um, but uh, we've, we've traditionally seen the bird in finales past. We might be seeing it again in this finale or, or maybe not. But I think I can definitively answer for you, Temporal 173, that the Hurley bird has never uh, appeared in Hurley's life prior to his um, life on the island. 
Because that bird actually has about a 16-foot wingspan. So that would be kind of a big bird to be in this in Los Angeles, actually. It sure would. All right. Um, one more? And one, then let's get out of here. Sure. Okay. Um, here, Here is my question. Three absolutes in the Lost Podcast by Serial Box Man. Just one post in the last 90 days. So awesome. I've got to read it. Hey, guys, I finally got around to listening to your podcast. Started with the first one of season three. I was so hooked, I listened and watched them all in two nights. So here are the three things that I noticed that must happen in each podcast. This is good, Carlton, because someone, you know, some people often say that they watch the DVDs straight through and that certain things come to light in terms of the show. Now, this is actually someone who's listened to all of our podcasts in a single sitting into the wee hours of the morning. So I'm sure we'll get some very astute observations. Number one, Damon will comment about himself not wearing any pants. It seems like we've already done that in this week. I think I commented. I don't know if you yourself commented on your lack of all, pants. Chris also commented. Check. Number two, Carlton will ask a question, and Damon's first response will be, well, that's an interesting question, Carlton. So, Carlton, <laughs> so Carlton, don't let Damon push you around when he says it sounds like you are always reading from the script. He is the one that's so predictable. <laughs> Number yes, three, you're right. Uh, number three, thank you. Ninety nine percent chance for a phone to ring. <laughs> <laughs> that is the one thing that I think that the uh, that the radio room has given us yeah, is we're from our phones. In it. We're in your uh, from the phones. Well, if I'm supposed to ask a question, then it should be this: addressing the guy that opens and closes each podcast. That's Chris. Chris. Is his job solely working on podcasts, that's... or did he work for Lost previously? Um, keep up the great work on Lost and hope to see how mad Nikki and Palo are at the A-Team in Season 7 for burying them alive. Serial you know, Box Man. So. But that's, and that's, what an appropriate question considering this podcast is all about Chris. It I is. Mean, it really is. Um, Will Chris still be this, interesting now that all the mysteries about him are being revealed? Is it, is it safe to say that you do a little more than just the Lost podcasts? It, you, it is safe to assume that. So you do other podcasts. I do other podcasts. What else do you do? I what mean, a, what are the other podcasts? You really actually do other stuff besides Lost? <laughs> okay. Why? Why? I, you know, I'm asking myself the same question. We do have the Ugly Betty podcast, and we also have the Grey's Anatomy podcast. What kind of questions get asked on the Grey's Anatomy or the Ugly Betty podcast? We actually – this is the only podcast where we do fan questions. Oh, really? So they just kind of talk about the making of the show and – Pretty much, it's uh, the the executive producers Shonda Rhimes and Betsy Beers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, chat about the show and talk about the episode that just passed. And on Ugly Betty, do they play have, instruments uh, or wear pants? No, no, but but they are big fans of you guys. Oh well, we love Betsy and Shonda. Yeah, and I it, and I will start listening to their podcast immediately. And what about the Ugly Betty podcast? And on the Ugly Betty podcast, we have two of our wonderful talent who uh, actually gab about the uh, show and also interview other talent. Um, Becky Newton. And wait, wait, Michael I'm Lear. sorry. Are you saying that we are not talent? Is that no. what you're inferring? Yes. Because uh, you all you all are very talented. No, no, you're like you're like no no on that podcast <laughs> we actually, actually have talent. <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, that's good. I mean, that's uh, interesting. The, the proper term good for to know. actors. Well well Carlton, I'm feeling very untalented right now, so I guess I'm, we should I'm so editing sign this off. <laughs> I thought that we were gonna have an up podcast and now I'm back <laughs> apparently, down apparently Chris is just pretty much throwing a stake in the heart of our up podcast, so Let's get depressed now and then get out of here. All right, Carlton. All right, Damon. Well, I wanna, guess we tried. We yeah. tried the best we could, but I'm sorry to wreck your podcast, Chris. Yeah, sorry, buddy. <laughs> Next time we'll maybe find some talent to sit, sit in. Sit here and actually help you have a good podcast for yourself. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, we hope you enjoy The Man Behind the Curtain. You probably won't because... Because Chris didn't work on it. Yeah, because Chris he had was busy to doing do Ugly it. Betty. It's an episode we're pretty proud of. We like it, you know. Even if Chris doesn't, you're going to learn a lot about Ben next week. But who cares? <laughs> really, just because you've waited for a year and a half. Yeah, exactly. All right, guys. We uh, we'll see you soon. Uh, next peace week, out. in fact. Okay. Take it easy. Bye. Bye. That's it for this week's podcast. Join us again next time for a rehash of the Man Behind the Curtain. And, of course, more fan questions. To get your questions read on the podcast, just log on to the boards at lost.abc.com. The Man Behind the Curtain airs Wednesday, May 9th from 10 to 11 p.m., only on ABC. ABC.